In this video we're going to go through the process involved in um, setting up a pole and then setting the dimensions, setting the geometry of the elements on that pole using the integrated photogrammetry tool. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our starting pole and we'll just put a new 45 class 4 which we would know from our field survey and then we're going to associate with it the image that represents that pole, the basically the image, the, including the calibrated target that is of it, the same pole. And you know your field process will dictate how these elements get in. So now I have my uh, picture of my pole, which is a relatively complicated pole my naked starting pole, and my data entry view, and so on and so forth. I'm going to switch over to a named view called my build view. That's the one that I use for doing this sort of task. And you'll see that I have my inventory on the left, my catalog is next to it, my 3D view at the top, and my image at the bottom. And let me just zoom so that I'm looking at these very things. So the first thing we need to do is calibrate our image. You'll notice in the image is this calibrated visual target, and the system, because it's not calibrated, has put me in calibrate mode. And all I have to do is pick the four retro reflectors one and two and three and finally four. And the system now says I'm calibrated, and switches over to height mode. Now, let me just go quickly. Um, without being too careful, go ahead and put the elements on the pole that I see in the image below. So let's take a let's zoom out and take a look. And so I see my standard frame at the top, which all these poles have. And so as we've done in the past, I'm just going to take my framing folder and drop it on top of the pole. And you'll see there's my primary and ser secondary and service. And again, I'm not too terribly worried about the heights of these elements right now. You can see, for example, that the, in this picture the service has actually been put up quite high, but in fact in this picture it's much closer there. Now we have this pole running off in an angle, and so we'll go, at, or excuse me, this cross arm with a, with a circuit running off at an angle. Um, and let me go to my miscellaneous folder and grab a dead end cross arm, and I will put that on, and there's that. And one other thing, one other thing I can do is I can switch it around so that it looks a little bit more in the, a little bit more in the 3D view like it does in the picture. And so what else do we have? We have two cat or uh, two cat V's. So I'll go to my joint use folder and take my time order, and I put. Well, actually, I just get approximately the right position. There's one and there's another and then finally we have a big telco bundle at the bottom so let me pick my telco bundle and I put that at the bottom um, we have a guy to guy that that span going off and so let me throw that on and finally we have a street light and I'll just go ahead and throw that on. And now, now we've made a pole that at least contains all the equipment, if not necessarily in the right uh, relational geometry. Uh, though I do notice that we have three spans going off there and we only have two spans going off here and that's easily fixed. I'll just take this span out, duplicate it onto the pole, and I'll go ahead and slide it over to the right position and now it matches my picture. Okay, so now we've got to start going ahead and setting the various uh, dimensions of things. So the first thing to do is set the setting depth of the pole. So I select the pole over here and then in my image I'll just go up to the tip of the pole I select tip, and so because I selected the pole in the inventory view, I have two options. One is I can cut off the pole, leaving its setting depth the same. The other is I can change its setting depth, knowing that knowing that it's a 45 class 4. So I'm going to set the install depth and go ahead and set that. It marks it in the image, 
and you know what I'm gonna get rid of this we're kind of done with that and for the time being I'm going to just switch my measuring tab up to here just so we can see what we're doing and how we work down the line alright here's my here's my upper cross arm here's my so again I had the wrong object selected here's my upper cross arm here is my lower cross arm here is where the guy is attached and let's just go down through our lines so and I just click on the bolts for convenience so here's my service line and we'll switch the uh, we'll skip the street light for a moment and so here's my upper cat V here's my lower cat V here's my telco and then finally we're going to go back and we're going to put in the street light. Now this, the reason I switched it is I wanted to show you the way that works is you pick the center of the bracket so here's my bracket here's my upper stay and I just pick the install height of the street light and now if we go back to my 3D view you can see we've made a very close representation of the of the pole that we're trying to measure. Everything's in the right orientation, everything's at the right heights, uh, the relative uh, distances between everything is set correctly. So if we go back and we switch back and forth between our, our image, let's take let's go out so we can look, look at it, you know, the street light sticks out between the service and the first joint use, and here the street light sticks out between the service and the first joint use. The angles are all correct, everything is guided correctly, and off we go. So really you can see how easy it is to make a spatially correct pole with all of the items um, set out on the pole at their correct heights and going off in the right in the correct angles without having to use a total station without having to stick the pole with nothing more than pretty much a simple photograph of that pole having the calibrated visual target in it you can go ahead and set up your pole with ease.